talk so it's magic you know never believe it's not so Your score without a calculator. Is it possible? Yes. Working out your score as a percentage is a lot easier than you might think. Now you should have a pen and paper at the ready because there will be questions. No calculators though. Now when the maximum score available can be divided equally into the figure of 100 then many scores can actually be worked out in your head. These magic numbers really help. OK, here are the figures that can go into the figure of 100 equally with no remainder. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50 and 100. If these are your scores, then working out percentages is a piece of cake. How many times the magic numbers go into 100? Well, 1 goes in 100 times, 2 50 times, 4 25 times, 5 20 times, 10 10 times, 25 times, etc, etc. Percentages are fractions of the figure of 100. This is what makes all of this possible. So 80 over 100 is 80%. Of course that's reduced to 8 tenths. Now this here is very important. The top half of the fraction is called the numerator. Okay. The bottom half of the fraction is called the denominator. I'll be saying these words a lot as this lesson goes on. So you need to know them. So there we have it you see. 7, that's the numerator. 9 is the denominator. The top half, numerator, bottom half, denominator. If your test is out of 4, you should learn the percentages and have no need for working out. For example, 1 out of 4, that's 25%, 1 quarter. 2 out of 4 is 50%, 1 half. 3 out of 4 is 75%, 3 quarters. So 25, 50, 75 over 100, that's 25%, 50% and 75%, quarter, half and three quarters. Try and memorise that. OK, have a go at this one here. Your friend only scored two out of five in the recent quiz. What was your friend's percentage? Two, you can pause, by the way, and try and work that out. Well, all you needed to do there was multiply the 2 by 20. Because remember, 20 is a magical number. Yep, so that would turn it into 40 over 100, or 4 tenths. And of course, what is 40 over 100 as a percentage? Of course, it's 40%. So 2 out of 5 is equal to 40 over 100 four tenths which is 40 percent and one would have been 20, two would have been 40, three 60, four 80 and of course five 100. Four is a magic number but 40 is not however multiplying the numerator 2.5 times gives you the percentage 11 over 40. 40 goes into 100 two and a half times so multiply 11 by 2.5 also 11 over 40. What is 2 times 11? That's 22. What is half times 11? That's 5.5. Answer 27.5, which is normally rounded up to 28%. Okay. Now, the scores out of 40, some of them are very easy here. Like these ones here, for example. Um, 10 out of 40 is 25%. 20 out of 40 is 50%. 30 out of 40 is 75%. Okay. Nice and easy. That's just 10 times 1, 2, 3, and 4. Some are a bit tricky. Remember to round up your figure. 17 out of 40 is 43%. Okay, why? Well, 
half of 7 is rounded up to 9 plus 2 times 17 so it's 9 plus 34 equals 43 right let's have a look at the one at the bottom the 33 out of 40 is 83 percent right because half of 33 is rounded up to 17 and then it's 2 times 66 so these magic numbers if your test has to say if, the, if your test has uh, these as your maximum score then percentages really are so easy it's like shelling peas okay so let's jump to the figure 20 it's a popular amount of questions in a quiz let's say you've scored 16 out of 20 You're right you've scored 16 out of 20 so I want you to tell me what your percentage is okay what's your score as a percentage well 20 went into 105 times so your score gets multiplied by the same amount 5 times 16 is 80 80 so the answer you should have had was 80 percent if it had been 11 out of 20 then it's 5 times 11 and that would have been 55 percent magic number they really help work out what your percentage is here okay you've scored 18 out of 25 let's just see if you've got a grasp of these magic numbers very very important that you've got a grasp of this here this is going to make your life so much easier when working out percentages well 25 went into 100 four times so your score of 18 also gets multiplied by 4 which gives you 72 percent what about 13 out of 25 as a percentage? Well, 4 times 13 equals 52%. Okay? So that's a case of multiplying the numerator by 4. Now this one here. Okay? And this one here. I don't want you to pause and, um, and try and work this out. For goodness sake, don't use a calculator. 34 over 50. This is a very easy one. 34 out of 50. What is that as a percentage? Just a simple case of doubling your actual score. 2 times 34 equals 68, so the percentage is 68%. Lovely and easy. So when the score is out of 50, it's just a case, it doesn't matter what your score is, it's just a case of doubling it, alright? Now another way you can find out your score as a percentage by dividing the numerator by the denominator and then multiplying by a hundred. You can do this of course on the calculator or you can do it with long division. Now there is a lesson all about long division on this channel. A playlist will be coming up at the end of the video. Okay so that is the other way to do it, right? Ho 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 it's magic you know never believe not so it's magic you know cancelling down fractions also known as reducing fractions this makes life a lot easier for you 54 over 81 for example that there is exactly the same as 6 over 9 once it has been reduced okay so 6 over 9 we know that 3 over 9 is 1 third so we simply double it up and we get 66.6, .6, which is rounded off to 67%. Never believe it's not so. 51 out of 60. There are a few ways to answer this one, but you always try and find the easiest way. 10% of 60 is 6, so 5% must be 3. 90% is equal to 54. Take 3, which is 5% away from 54, to reveal the score you got, 51, making 51 out of 60 equal to 85%. The second way to find 51 out of 60 as a score is by reducing the fraction to 17 over 20. We see that 3 goes into the numerator 17 times and into the denominator 20 times. And this allows us to reduce the fraction to 17 over 20. 20 is one of the magic numbers. We simply multiply that 5 times to get 100. And we do the same with the numerator. Okay, which we've just explained. So 5 times 17 is 85. Oh. 
With 40, you know it goes into 100 2.5 times. So you multiply the numerator by 2.5 also. Okay, you can also see what figure goes into 18 and 40. Yes, if you don't like that way. And what figure is that? Well, that figure there is two. That's the only figure that can go into both the numerator and the denominator to cancel down the fraction. So that cancels down the 18 over 40 fraction to 9 over 20. Ah, look at that. Look at that lovely 20 under there. 20 is, what is it? A magic number. So this is going to be so easy to work out. It's just a case of 5 times 9 is 45. 45%. There's more than one way of doing things. Now, I'm going to start singing again if you get this wrong, okay? 39 over 50. Please tell me the percentage. No pen, no paper. Just tell me what it is, please. Thank you. 50 is one of your magic numbers. Of course it is. We simply dum double, okay, double the numerator. 2 times 39, which is 78. 13 over 20, what is that as a percentage? I'll give you two clues. One clue is 5, and that's not the answer, by the way. And the other clue is magic number. Of course it was 65%. So what happens when we're dealing with prime numbers? Prime numbers can only be divided by themselves and the figure 1, like 5, 7, 11, 53, 89 and 101, for example. Well, what happens there? Is it a case of working out percentages without a calculator is impossible? No, it isn't. Let's say you scored 50 out of 70. OK, you change that to 5 out of 7, which is the same as 50 out of 70. How many 7s go into 100? 14 with a remainder of 2. So what we do to the denominator we also do to the numerator. We multiply that by 14 and add 2% to cover the small remainder. 14 times 5 equals 70 plus 2 is 72%. 50 out of 70 is actually 71% but 72% is close enough for a rough est estimation. Using that same method, we can get very close to these percentage figures. 51 out of 60, remember that one? It's changed to 5 out of 6, 85%. How many times does 6 go into 100? 100 is the question you ask yourself there, and it's 17. 5 out of 6 would be roughly 80%. How many times does 6 go into 100? That's 16. And 9 out of 11 would be roughly 81%. And, uh, of course, 11 uh, goes in 9 times, or 9 11s. So, you scored 13 out of 19, working out in your head 70% because the denominator goes into 100 five times with a 5 remainder. So we multiply 13 by 5 to get 65 and then add 5% to cover the remainder. On a pen and paper with long division, it's 19 into 13, which is 0.68 times 100. It's a little bit more complicated doing it that way. It takes a bit longer. Now, you don't need to know 17, 9, your 17, 19, and 36 times table, okay? It's just a simple case of doing this. For example, 6 times 7 equals 42, and 6 times 10 equals 60. Add them together, and you get 102. 5 times 9, that's 45. 5 times 10, that's 50. Add them together, and you get 95, okay? So that is how that's done. If that's confusing you there, that's quite easy. 15 out of 23. Now you're trying to get as close to the actual percentage score as possible, even with rough percentages. So 4 times 23 equals 92. That's not close enough to 100. So why not change this to 15 over 25, a magic number, and add percentage points? A few percentage point increases puts you to within a couple of percent of the actual figure. And you can do it very quickly. Now, 15 over 25 can actually be reduced to three fifths, but we can work with 25% as that's a magic number. 
uh, but the actual score was 15 out of 23 and 2 points is quite a big percentage of a small figure. So you bear that in mind with your calculation and change 60% to 65% knowing you won't be far off. Getting to within a couple of percentage points is always your aim, even with mental arithmetic. Get as close as you can. You can of course break everything down. For example 1% of 7 is 0.07. Okay, you can see it there, there's 60%, that is 4 out of 7, 70% is 5 out of 7, you can do it that way too, just break everything down. Right, you can do it that way, if you're wanting to be very, very precise, as you see it, it is a bit fiddly, it takes a bit of time, but it all goes to prove that you don't need a calculator. Here's 83, all broken down, there it is, you see it there, uh, for example, you've got 20%. Uh, that is actually, 20% uh, 20, 20 would be 16.6 as a score, so obviously uh, that would get uh, rounded off there. And um, you see, for example, there's uh, 70%, that's 58.1, that would get rounded down, that would get round, um, your score would be 58 there, of course. So, let's say you scored 72 out of 83, right? Tell me your exact percentage using the table. Remember, there's no calculator allowed here. Okay, the table's going to come back up. Right. Now, the figures are rounded off. We don't have them there. Now, just to make it a little bit more complicated, so what you've got to do here is pause the video and try and work out what is 72 out of 83. And I hope you did try that there. To get to the right answer, you had to multiply 0.83 which is 1% 3 times to get 2.52 which equals 3% and take it away from 90% to get the figure of 87.48% which would be rounded down to 87% <laughs> I bet if I carry on that not easy you see that wasn't easy and that's with them all written out so the techniques I'm showing you here they certainly aren't much more complicated than that so let's see how close we would get by simply doing it in our heads. The first thing to do is to change the score of 70 out of 80 to 7 eighths. Then we see how many times 8 will go into 100 and that is 12 with the remainder of 4. We then multiply the score of 7 by 12 and deduct 1% for a change in score and add 4% to cover the remainder. And hey presto, what happens there? We hit the figure of 87%. So it's amazing how close we actually get to working out percentages without a calculator. Normally we're bang on, or sometimes just a couple of percent out, which is fine. We make it easy for ourselves. Let's say, for example, your score is 79 out of uh, 89. Well, you change it to a fraction of 8 over 9. And use the same method I've shown you before, with the denominator going in to the figure of 100. And we got it bang on there. 77 out of 83. See, with that one there, I would change that to 8 nines. 9 goes into 111 times with a 1 remainder. 11 times 8 is 88. 5% uh, plus 5% to account for, for the score being 4 points less than we got. We also add 1% for that remainder of 1, 92%. Now, you see, with that one there, we got within 0.7% of the actual score. 65 out of 75, 7 eighths I'd change that to. It keeps gap between score and possible score the same. It goes into 112 times with a 4 remainder. 12 times the numerator of 7 equals 84 plus 4 to cover remainder. 88%, just one out, it was 87. Look how close we got there by doing that. Okay, the denominator into the figure of 100. And we just copy that with the numerator, the same amount of times. 55 out of 65, change that to 6 sevenths. There are 14 sevenths in 100 with a 2 remainder, right? So 14 times 6 equals 84, plus 1 to cover the remainder, as 2 is a very small fragment of 65. Okay? So that's 85%, and that would be bang on correct. And look how quickly we worked that one out there. 46 over 96. Well, we know that is quite an easy one there, okay? 
Uh, 46 has to be 40% because 1% of 96 is 0.96 and double that is uh, 1.92. That's rounded off to 2 and deducted from 50 to make 48%. Okay, that's a blatantly obvious one. You can see by looking at it there that it's more or less half. So it's just a case of just deducting little blocks. When your score is very close to 100%, what about 88 out of 91? Deduct in 1% blocks, okay? 0.91%, okay? So 3 times 0.91% equals 2.73. Round that off to 3 and take it away from 100 and that gives you 97%. Okay, let's have a look at 63 out of 69. Well, 10% of 69 is 6.9. We round it off to 7. So removing that from 69 brings you to 62. Still not right. Okay. Well, let's add a 1%, which would be 0.69. Round that off to 1. And you have it. 91%. So we discovered by doing that that 6 points were equal to 9%. Sometimes it is easier just to deduct from the figure. 15 out of 16, well doing the deducting 10% and 1% segments with this one is a bit confusing, I should warn you. So uh, I would return to the old system here, okay, because there's many ways to do it. How many times does 16 go into 100? It goes in 6 times. So it's 6 times 15, okay, that's the score, equals 90% plus 4 to, re to account for the remainder okay that's that's 94 percent okay let's wrap up this lesson with some questions and answers and please stay with me for this year because this is where it all becomes crystal clear okay question one you scored 15 out of 27 what is your score as a percentage remember that 13.5 would be 50 percent okay remember to pause when answering the questions you can pause now Well, the answer is 56%. We could cancel down that score to show it as 5 over 9 because 3 went into both numerator and denominator. 9 went into 111 times with a 1 remainder. So we also multiplied the numerator with 11 and 11 times 5 is 55 plus 1 is 56%. Okay. So on to question number 2 now. Please remember to pause. Okay. And have a go at these questions. Right. Which figure is not a magic figure? Okay. A magic figure, a magic number rather. A number that goes into 100 with no remainder. Is it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25 or is it 100? Of course the answer there is 3 as it does not go into 100 an equal amount of times. Although it is a magical number you can do all sorts of tricks with it as well. How many times does 3 go into 100? Well that's one of these ones that goes in 33.333 times, you know, it's one of these point threes that goes on forever. And it's, it goes on forever, that uh, it's point three recurring, you call that. Question four. What is your score as a percentage, okay? Look at this very closely. You have scored 18 out of 27, okay? Remember, try and get the highest number into both the numerator and the denominator. And remember to pause and have a look at this question. Okay. Pause as soon as I've finished asking the question. Answer to question 4 is 67% because it's two thirds as a fraction. It was 9 that went into both the numerator and the denominator. Okay. Or 3 could have done it as well. Question 5. You scored 75% when you answered 40 questions. So how many did you actually get right? Okay, you scored 75% when you answered 40 questions. How many did you get right? I hope you're pausing and having a go, go at these. The answer is 30 because your score equaled 3 quarters. Okay, which is 30. Okay, question 7. You scored 100 out of a possible 125. What is that as a percentage? Pause the video, have a think about it, write down the answer. For goodness sake, no calculators. 
It just defeats the whole purpose of this video. Answer to question 7 is 80% because 25 went into the denominator 5 times and into the numerator 4 times. That's 4 fifths, okay, as a fraction. And 4 fifths are always 80%. Four fifths, that was eighty percent. Question eight. Okay, this is a tricky one. You will have to pause here. You scored three out of eight. It doesn't look tricky, but it is. Tell me your score showing the number after the decimal point. So you've got to show me the figure, the percentage figure plus the decimal point after it. Please pause, have a go at it. Hope you did pause and had a go at it. The answer to question 8 is 37.5. As 8 goes into 100, 12.5 times. Each point you scored is also equal to 12.5%. So you triple it up. 3 out of 8 equals 3 times 12.5, which equals 37.5%. It was a bit of a tricky one, that. That's what you call chunking. Showing all the points here as percentage blocks. Question 9. And this one here a little bit easier. Okay, question 9. We'll still have to pause, however. Have a little think about it. You scored 78% in a 9 question quiz. How many points did you get? 78% is what you scored oh, from a 9 question quiz. Okay, there was 9 questions in the quiz. Well, the answer there, well, each point is in a nine question quiz is worth 11.1%. So you see how many of them go into 78, and that is 7. Okay, uh, 7 times 11.1 .1 is 77.7, .7, which is rounded up to 78%. Okay, so 7 was the correct answer there. You scored 7 out of 9, and that equals 78%. Question number 10, 9 out of 13. Work out the rough percentage in your head. Okay, you will have to pause. You need to get to within 2% of the actual answer. Okay, there is a tip. Keep the remainder as small as you can. Have a go at this. 9 out of 13 as a percentage. Do it in your head. Get as close as you can. Question 10, the answer there was 68%. We went about this one differently. We went 8 times 13 is 104. So it's 8 times numerator of 9 equals 72 minus the 4 we went over equals 68%. If you did it that way, you were only 1% out as the actual score is 69%. Okay, so we just went slightly over there and we still arrived at a figure very close. So we've learned a lot today. We've learned about magic numbers. These are the f if these figures are your maximum score, then a simple case of multiplication of your actual score gives you the percentage cancelling down fractions. We've done that there, simplifying fractions to make calculations easier. Seeing how many times the denominator goes into a hundred and then doing the same with the numerator. Estimating percentages by seeing how many times the denominator went into a hundred. We saw how much to multiply the numerator to gain score as a percentage. We translated scores into fractions. Finding out what percentages are using long division. Well, that's numerator is divided by the denominator and we multiply by a hundred. Of course, we didn't do that in this lesson. So please check out the other videos and the playlists that you see here and thank you very much indeed. Uh, if this is one of these videos that you may have to watch again because there was a lot to take in here. The more you watch it, the better you become and of course always practice. Practice makes perfect. Have a go at your own calculations. Your percentage score without a <laughs>